Fantasy Podcast Network's family of shows. Available every... Hello, everyone, and welcome back into the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. For our fourth segment here on the day, we are going to be making my picks for the week. Chris's picks makes its triumphant return to the show in all four games, I believe. Actually, only three that I believe I've chosen. Actually, four. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit mixed up here. Four games you've chosen, perhaps the biggest of the week. And I feel like some of these games, you know, feel like they're already done before the kickoff's even begun. But I do want to bring to light ways in which these underdogs potentially, you know, shock some people. They may not win outright because... I've not been that confident in the games I've picked that some of the teams could win outright against the spread. But this week I feel more comfortable with these scenarios that I've picked because I've started to respect certain teams from what I've seen from them. And also, you know, I think some top teams that I'm kind of foreshadowing here are a little bit more vulnerable than we think. And... They're not necessarily susceptible, they are susceptible, I believe, to some issues. And that's why I feel like I had to pick some games over others to kind of bring that to light. Because that was something I felt I didn't necessarily do as well with this segment. To kind of pick games where I could go against the spread and pick teams that I feel will cover. But... I haven't been doing that, and so I wanted to try and challenge myself this week by picking more diverse games. So without further ado, let's talk about them. Starting off with perhaps the most diverse game of them all. A divisional game in the AFC West. The Broncos take on the Chiefs. Interesting game here. Kansas City, 9-point favorites. The over-under, 41.5. Denver, plus 300 to win. KC, minus 500 to win. Huge discrepancy on the betting markets. Not necessarily respecting. The fact that the Broncos, yes, have, you know, not necessarily looked like they can beat superior teams. They got their butts handed to them by the Ravens this past week, and they certainly feel like they've lost a little bit of their early season hype. But I still love this defense. I still have faith that this defense can find a way to be the reason why the Denver Broncos can win football games. The offense has been steadily improving, but I don't think they're there quite yet. The defense, however, I feel, has grown leaps and bounds from last season to now. Remember, this was a team last season that gave up 70 points to the Miami Dolphins. 70. And this year, they've really found their groove. But that being said, they have played some pretty bad teams. They haven't had the toughest of schedules, so to speak. I'm going to pull up their schedule right now to show you what they've beaten. In the Saints, the Panthers, and the Raiders. That's not necessarily the most impressive schedule. And it certainly, and it certainly shouldn't convince you that they can have a fighter's chance against the Chiefs. But, the reason why I'm picking the Broncos as the first pick against the spread to cover, not to win outright. I have to cover my tracks a little bit because I'm still not completely all on the Broncos train. I feel like this is one of those games where the Chiefs can be a little bit exposed because, remember, that game against the Bucks was one that, you know, a lot of people were worried about for the Bucks. A lot of people thought that, you know, against the best defense in the league, the Bucks would have no hope because they didn't have Evans or Godwin. And yet they kept it close. If the Broncos play smart and their defense shows up, then chances are they can cover the spread. It's not also about the offense wholly because the defense is the reason why they've been winning football games and they've been in football games as often as they have. So, if those two units can coalesce and find a way to, A, break down the Chiefs' defense 
and B, corral the Chiefs' offense, then that's a simple formula to covering the spread. So that's why I wanted to make this pick kind of a historic pick here on this segment of the show because I've never before have picked anyone to cover the spread that was such a heavy underdog like the Broncos are. But now let's get to more games that I feel like the picks are clearer here. Let's go to 49ers Bucks here. Another kind of situation where, you know, covering the spread makes a lot of sense for the Bucks. They are six and a half point underdogs. The over-under is 48.5 points. San Fran minus 290 to win. Tampa Bay plus 240 to win. But the reason why I feel like I'm picking the 49ers outright to win is because of the fact that there's more optimism surrounding them now. They're gaining players. The Bucks lost players. And so I can't ignore that factor. There was a chance that potentially Mike Evans could be back by this game, but it's looking like he's going to have to sit out the bye and then return after. So that's why I feel like the 49ers, while they had to be wary of what the Bucks kind of showed the Chiefs, I feel like there's more sense of hope the 49ers can start building to what we know they can be again. They're going to bring back McCaffrey. This offense is getting a little bit healthier. The defense feels like it will figure things out. And they feel set to make that push we know they can. But why the Bucks are so appealing is because of what they showed us against the Chiefs. They showed that they can be diverse enough. And that they truly, if they're given the chance, can make some noise if they get into the playoffs as well. This will be a perfect limits test for them. Because these are the two toughest games remaining on their schedule. After that, it's paradise. It's one of the easiest schedules in the NFL after these two games. So make it through these games, potentially split them, and your game momentum as well. But the 49ers right now are in that position already. The Bucks not quite yet. So that's why I'm taking the 49ers in this one. Then the Steelers against the Commanders. A very interesting game here. The only intra-conference game, actually, in my list here. And so, the reason why this game, to me, is so important is because the surprise factor is gone at this point. These teams are two, two, two true contenders. And both of them have a very efficient feel to them. They execute their game plan and they execute it well, and that's the reason they win football games. On the Steelers' side of things, I feel it's more down to the fact that their culture has been like this since day one of the Mike Tomlin era. The fact that no matter how their team looks on paper, they can make it tough for you. Their defense has been one of the best over the past decades. And yes, they've had their offensive struggles over the past couple of years as well. But they seem to have found a decent formula with Russell Wilson at the helm. On the commander's side of things, it's just about getting a rookie quarterback comfortable in an NFL system. And by doing that, you have to incorporate a lot of college-style things. And kudos to Cliff Kingsbury for going this deep into the season and allowing Jaden Daniels to play in this style. As a result, Jaden Daniels repaying the favor by being one of the best QBs in the NFL. But I kind of feel like the reason, even though the Washington Commanders are two and a half point favorites in this one, it's a very important spread to know, the Steelers still have the upper hand. As Flashbow says, when was the last time two unlikely or six and two teams met? Tomlin finds the path to victory. Uh, for the life of me, I can't remember, but it might have involved your Vikings, I believe, as a surprise 6-2 and two team. But I don't remember any matchup where two teams who not just are unlikely 6-2 and two teams, but are unlikely in how they're run, one being run by a very contentious veteran quarterback who we know has his flaws, and we know who 
has to play a certain way in order to succeed, seemingly, compared to a rookie quarterback who has taken this league by storm, but is playing in a very safe, efficient system. That's what makes this matchup so unusual, so confounding. But I still have to give it to the Steelers, as Splash Bros alluded to, because of the coaching. I feel like Mike Tomlin's also a big reason that the Steelers are finding ways to win football games. And he always has been. Even if, you know, the offense looks good and the defense looks as sensational as it's been over the past five years or so, it's all going to come down to the fact that Mike Tomlin is someone who gets the best out of his players. And I'm not quite sure the same story can continue for Washington because eventually Dan Quinn got found out in his first tenure as a head coach. Cliff Kingsbury got found out as well. And this feels like the game where they could be found out. But I still think they're an elite football team. I regard both of these teams very highly now, but I still can't ignore the Steelers' ascension this year, especially considering the fact that Russell Wilson has made this offense very scary. In the last game, simple divisional game, but one that kind of lost a little bit of its betting fun, Eagles-Cowboys. Philly, 7-point favorites over under 42.5, Dallas plus 300, Philly, I believe, minus 400 in this matchup. And this one now feels a little too simple. But, if there's any silver lining for the Cowboys, that I t- kind of alluded to in my injury segment. We talked about the Dak Prescott and Cedar Lamb injuries. Yes, it's never a good thing to kind of wish on a player's downfall, but there just seemed like so much weight and expectation for the Cowboys this season between the tensions of the contract, between the hope the Cowboys fans had now that everything seemingly was sorted out to now that I feel like Cooper Rush is entering a situation that yes seems bleak but actually allows him to play freely and actually see what's beyond Dak Prescott and C. Lamb and how once they return this offense can be expanded and that's all I want to see out of the Cowboys because I'm sick and tired of the same old narrative that Dak Prescott and C. Lamb need to be the faces of this franchise. And while they always will be, and they deserve to be, there are other players who I feel like can be utilized so that the pressure is not wholly on their shoulders all the time. So that's why I feel like this situation is a blessing and a curse at the same time. A curse because Dak Prescott and C. Lamb don't see out the season and see how they can solve their own problems. But a blessing in that Cooper Rush is entering a system that, yes, doesn't have stars in it, but has a path forward for him to play free football. So even though I've still taken the Eagles, because the Eagles... Yes, you can say Nick Sirianni is an inept play caller. They still have offensive talent that compensates for that. Jalen Hurts can play very well when he wants to. So can Saquon Barkley. So can Devontae Smith. So can A.J. Brown. And that is why I feel like the Eagles have to be favored in this one. Although, Cowboys fans shouldn't say, woe is me. They should be optimistic about what Cooper Rush can bring to this team. And now they don't necessarily have to worry about this extending for a full season length and missing the playoffs because of, you know, the tensions built with the relationships between Dak, CD, and the franchise. So I hope that helps in terms of how this determines this game. And I also hope that, you know, picking four very different games, games where you know, you can root for the underdog, bet on the underdog if you would. But overall, I just wanted to, you know, diversify this segment a little bit, make it a little less bland so that I'm not always picking the favorites each and every single time. So I hope you appreciate that. But for our last segment of the day, when we return, we are going to be discussing Sunday Night Football, Lions 
Texans, a little betting preview to get you ready for that game. Be right back after this short break. <laughs> 